Are we living where we're planned to live? Are we living with the king? Are we in his kingdom? No. Why are we not in his kingdom? Because we and our fathers rebelled against him. We did rebel. We all rebelled. We're all guilty of rebellion. So. We were raised with rebellion. So now then. In verse 30 of Ezekiel 20, it says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says, Will you defile yourselves the way your fathers did? That's a question to every one of us. Are we going to defile ourselves as the way our fathers did? And lust after their vile images. When you offer the gifts and the sacrifice of your sons in the fire, you continue to defile yourselves with your, with your idols to this day. Am I to let you inquire of me, O house of Israel, as surely as I have declared, says the sovereign Lord, I will not let you inquire of me. That's pretty tough, tough speech. So if I says there, you know, I will continue, hang on. You say, we want to be like the nations, like the peoples of the world who serve wood and stone. That's not the term we actually use today. We say, but do we want to be like the world? In my own life? It's an open question in Israel every day. Their leaders want to be accepted by the world. And they shouldn't. So in my own life, if I sit there and look at that and it says, okay, I see all these friends of mine doing this. Then they're having a good time. Do I envy them? Well, I'm just asking. If you look at it that way, even, I mean, if you're even seeing that picture. Man, that party over there, or that celebration they're doing over there, oh, it's got Jesus' name on it. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. Hmm. But, you know, Jim, it's, it's nice, though, because you can take that same illustration and he's he's merciful in that he lets us see through our life hopefully where that doesn't apply anymore where it doesn't appeal to you anymore where it doesn't draw you anymore there are those things where you can look at it and go well i used to do that i used to really enjoy that now i couldn't even think of doing that anymore I, it, has no appeal to me whatsoever, has no draw. I mean, so he's merciful, and he does let us change, and he does let us see that change. It, exactly, and I want to go back onto that, because just what I just said, when I started, got into Torah, I, got, I became a Torah terrorist. <laughs> I thought it was my job to point out everything everybody else was doing wrong. What term did he say? Mercy. Did God have mercy on me? Mm -hmm. then you better have mercy on everybody around you. Mm -hmm. If they're having a celebration and they're doing something and God hasn't revealed to them that that is wrong, then you better just keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you are not speaking love. You are condemning. Right. And how are we to condemn when our gracious Heavenly Father in all my filth has graciously said to me, I don't remember that anymore. It's covered. Now, I'm guilty. And if I've heard anybody in here with this word, because it is sharper than a two-edged sword. And if I don't know how to yield it or wield it, I'm going to cut people up and hurt people in the name of the Lord, and that is blasphemy, people. Because He is Lord. I am guilty. So we have to be careful. Just because somebody doesn't do it the way we see or seen it the way we have. And we're going to go over that in a minute. I'm going to bring it out in the scripture. Because it says we all see things partly. Paul tells us that. We're going to go look at that. And if I've seen anything in this movement I don't like, it's the fact that people use this word and just massacre other people and hurt other people, and then self-righteously walk off and can't believe that they hurt somebody. How dare you feel like you were hurt? How dare you? I was giving you truth. Didn't you receive it? 
I'm trying to make you a better person. When I, in my own deal, was doing nothing but, not, was I lifting that person up? No, I wasn't. What was I doing? I was cutting them down. If I'm cutting somebody down, then what am I doing? I'm living by the flesh. If I'm living by the flesh, that was for my own benefit to show that I was smarter than they were. It's pride. It's pride. And the arrogance. And I'm talking to me. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. Because I've done that. And my poor wife has suffered most of it. <laughs> what you were doing, doing is the Holy Spirit's job. Yes. Not your job. It's not my job. It's not my job. My job is to love them. My job is, is if, if they need a helping hand, help them. If, if I need to love them, love them. Now, does that mean I'm to accept anything and everything that they do? Mm -hmm. No. But in love, I can say, you know, I don't want to participate. Well, why not? Your opportunity. Opportunity. And you can graciously bow down, bow out. I celebrated Rosh Hashanah because my wife doesn't believe it yet. But I celebrated it. She allowed me to celebrate. She didn't ask, and I didn't say. I could have said, well, you're missing the whole day, dear. Look what you're missing. And she looked back at me and says, why are you condemning me? I haven't seen it yet. I'd be guilty, wouldn't I? Okay, I, I'm sorry. Jim. I was at the grocery store the other day and I ran into this black lady that I knew from Trinity. And her and her niece were getting some stuff out of the freezer. And this one niece says, Look, I found ham and veal with it together in a sausage. I said, Well, God tells us we're not supposed to eat that cup pork. And she says, Oh, but God forgives. I said, Well, uh, God also knows He made our bodies and He knows what's best for us. Well, that's true. But she bought it anyway. <laughs> yeah, she bought it anyway. <laughs> it's like last night. I'm planning this memorial service for today. And I gave him some money to help with food and stuff. And he goes, man, he said, I'll go buy a big old ham with this. And I said, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. And he goes, oh, that's right. How about a turkey meal? And I said, you're on it. <laughs> but that's not, you know, I mean, not, not your deal, but... You know, it really isn't up to us. You don't need to tell somebody what to eat. To do this. When I first got into show, this. You can show someone something, and it's so funny because there's been seeds that had been planted in me seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, and all of yeah, a sudden, sprouting. all of a sudden, something comes to me, and like my sister will say, well, you know, I mentioned that to you three years back, but you know, someone's going to plant the seed. Then it's going to be watered, but it's up to him to reveal it to me at the time that he's ready to reveal it to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, just don't whack off the growth button. Yeah, please don't. Whack off the growth button? With the sword. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody's just getting new into this, sometimes <coughs> we think we can just dump a bucket of water on it. We drown them. Yeah. We do. We drown people all the time. Run them away. We run them away. We scare them off. And Crucify them. We do. We do. So let's continue on. We, we all have horror stories, I know. I do. Okay. Where are we at? I'm in thirty. I'm in Ezekiel twenty thirty two. It says, "You say we want to be like the nations, like the peoples of the world, serve wood and stone, but what you have in mind will never happen. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I will rule over you with a mighty hand and outstretched arm and without court wrath." I will bring you from the nations and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and without court wrath, I will bring you into the desert of the nations, and there, face to face, I will execute judgment upon you as I judge your fathers in the desert of the land of Egypt. So I will judge you, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will take note of you as you pass under my rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge those of you who revolt and rebel against me. Whoa. Uh -oh. Okay, so we're all out there, sheep and the goats. Matthew, 
Jesus tells us about this in Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Let's read about that. Go to Matthew. Who wants to read Matthew 25? Thirty-one through forty-six. Twenty-five, thirty-one through forty-six. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people. One from another, as a sheep, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Isn't that what we just read in Ezekiel 20? He says, "As you pass under my rod, I will take no note of you, and I will bring you to the blood of the covenant. I will purge you of those who revolt and rebel against me." So we're going to be brought out into the desert. He's going to come up before us and he goes, do you want to live by my instructions? Do you believe in Yeshua as your king? Yes or no? Yes. Well done, faithful servant. Come over here and be with my sheep. Or are we going to come under him and say, no, I don't have to live that way anymore. I'm free. I'm under Christ. I'm under grace. That's all been done away with. I don't have to live by those instructions. Well, uh, just the symbol over there. Here. That goes. <laughs> it's, that's kind of scary, isn't it? Because when I first started this, did y'all know y'all want to live with your doors open and your all that stuff? That's on the tortoise side. The longest <coughs> side, the side is over here with the goats. Man, if you're over there with the goats, you better have a shotgun. 357 Magnum. And you better have your tools to, to fix your own flat on your own time, on your own car. Right? And in the Walmart parking lot, there's going to be carts everywhere. I'm just putting it in today's terms. Yeah. Kind of different. You never thought about it that way, did we? We always think about the mm -hmm. old stuff. Well, what about all those sacrifices and all that other stuff? I don't know. I'm not a Levi. It doesn't apply to me. Did Yeshua keep all the law? Yes. He kept all that applied to him. He kept all that applied to him. That applied to him. Not all the law applied to him. Not all of them applied to him. Did he have an issue of blood? <laughs> He's not a woman, is he? No. Okay, so did he have to apply to what women have to apply to? Okay. <laughs> he did. How is he going to fulfill that? Everything that, everything that applied to him. Don't make it harder than it has to be. I didn't think that either. I thought he did, he, he did the whole thing. And I'm like, wait a minute. He can't do the whole thing because I know it applied to him. If it did, he would have. But it didn't apply to him. He's, he wasn't a priest at the time. Did he do sacrifices? No. So did he have to follow the sacrificial stuff? Yeah, he wasn't a Levite. He wasn't a Levite. But he was kind, considerate, and loved. And okay, we'll continue. Did, did that throw some some of y'all for a loop today? He didn't keep all of it because not all of it applied to him. Now you can. Now you know. Now you know. Not all of it applies to you. Not all of it applies to me. There's only two rules that apply to me. Love him and love you guys. So that's it. Okay, back, back where we were. Man, y'all are quiet today. What is y'all's deal? What do you want? I want to wrap it up. I think, uh, yes, go back to Ezekiel. Okay. And then we're going to go. Now, something else I want to point out. 
if you only read the New Testament and you don't understand the Old, then it's like watching the last part of the movie. What we don't really understand is that the Gospels were written to an advanced, learned group. When Yeshua spoke, he spoke to people who could quote the Torah from memory, who could quote the prophets from memory. How many of y'all in this room could have the Torah memorized? How many of y'all have the prophets memorized? So we're going to look at some of the Yeah, yeah. So he says one thing, and we don't have a clue as where it came from, but then we go, way out and just keep on going. But just wait, you're going to see why the Pharisees wanted to kill him that day. Because I'm going to give you a remez that's in today's scripture, in today's Torah portion. And boy, does Yeshua wield that sword? Does he wield it well? Because then you know, oh, now I see why they wanted to kill him. Man, he cut up to the core. So we're going to look at that. Okay, so back to this. Is he continuing? <coughs> Ezekiel 20 is all about grace. He says in this deal, does he say he's going to bring us back because we are a holy people or because we're righteous and because we're awesome? Does he say that in this? For his name's sake, no. What does he say three times? For my name's sake. And only for his name's sake. Is that grace? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I can't earn it. I cannot earn my salvation. Amen. That's awesome. Now, four times. Four times. He said, oh, he says it four times. Four times. For his name's sake. For his, his name's sake. Awesome. Okay, so we got that. Let's go back to Ezekiel now. We're going to go back to uh, New Testament some, some more. The Brit High Shop. But so let's. Let's talk about this. And I tell you what, never mind, let me think about it. Remember, I'm a substitute teacher, so y'all have to forgive me if I'm not real organized. Let's go to Matthew 12. And we're going to read this story of what's going on. And I'm going to see if I can give you a little more clarity, because this is what the Lord showed me. So Matthew 12. And this is the Sabbath day. What do Jewish people do every Sabbath? Go to synagogue. Go to synagogue and listen to what? Moses. The reading of the word. Okay. So I wonder if this Torah portion was this week when he said he does this. Because it's yes. interesting. Yes. Well, I'm talking about the Lord in Matthew, what he's about to say. It says, it starting at 12, it says, At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some of the heads and eat them. In Torah, does it say I can go to my neighbor's field, and if I'm hungry, eat? Yep. It says I can do that, but I can't take a basket with me. Right. Yeah, don't harvest. Yourself. Don't harvest. Yeah. But I can eat. Yeah. Right. So he's hungry. Is the Lord merciful? Yeah. Does he want us to be hungry? So is it okay on the Sabbath day to walk to the field and eat, eat some grain? Yeah. 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 You, wash your hands. <laughs> you do not have to wash. That is not Torah. <laughs> that is very problem. <laughs> okay. So he's not doing anything wrong. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, "Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath day, according to whose law?" Their law. Their law. Who gave them over to their law? God. Did we read that earlier? I just read that. He says because they wanted to go do that. He just I'm just going to sit here and watch what they do. And they came up with all this crazy stuff. I mean, it's amazing to watch. I mean, Pharisees, they can't even put their shoes on any way, which way they want. they got to put a certain shoe on one way, then another shoe on. And then they got to tie the shoe on one side and then go back and tie the other one. I forgot about socks. And socks, too. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. All these crazy things. Does that help me love you? No. Well, then it's not law. Okay. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate and consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priest. Or haven't you read that the law on the Sabbath, the priest in the temple, desecrate the day, and yet are innocent? 
I tell you that one greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would have not committed the, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Okay. Going from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is this man than a sheep? This is important. Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath, which when I first got into this, man, I wouldn't do anything on the Sabbath. So if I'm going, if I'm coming from my house to here and somebody has a flat tire, is it okay for me to stop and help that person fix that flat tire? Yes. I better stop and help that person fix that flat tire because it is lawful to do good. What if I'm riding down the road and there's a guy sitting there and he, and he knocks on my window and he says, Man, I'm starving. I haven't eaten all week. Oh, man, I, I'd help you, but this is the Sabbath, and I can't buy on the Sabbath, <laughs> and I have no food. You better get yourself over there to that store and buy that man some food and let him eat. Amen? Yes. Or take him to the, to the field and let him pick some rain. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> This is a Sabbath. I, just, I can't take it to the store, but hey, there's a field out here with some corn in it. Help yourself. I'll well, take him to Smyer. I know where there's a field. Yeah, but what do we do in the winter? Eat cotton? Cotton's not a Jewish store. Go to a Goim store. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I just, I'm just trying to get away from legalism. I'm trying to get free here. Amen. The point the you know, that we just read in here in Matthew, though, that I thought was really interesting, or have you, in 12.5, or have you not read the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and are innocent? They're working. But for who's good? They're doing their job. But they're doing good. And, and they're going to get paid for doing that job because they get good. part of that sacrifice. You know, they're serving. They're doing... Okay, there's the word. What are they doing? Serving. What are we to be? Serving. There you go. Now, if it is something that's going to benefit myself on that day, worshiping self, oh, idol here, oh, idol Jim, who I bow down to and I have to kick myself for doing it, I shouldn't do things like that on that day. He gives me six days to take care of me. But on that seventh day, should I be out there going, you know, I could make an extra hundred bucks if I do this today. <laughs> Who's that worshiping? Is that helping you guys? Mm -hmm. It's not helping you guys. There you go. Okay. Back to the story. Because i got to show you how Yeshua here in a minute just takes these Pharisees and lets them have it in the room. You all ready? Okay. Then he said to him, Stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. Many followed him and he healed their sick, warning them not to tell who he was. This was to fill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant who I have chosen, the one I love and whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed will he not break. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out until he leads justice to victory. In his name the nations will put their hope. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. And the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that he, this fellow drives out demons. Now, when I, in the Jewish, in Eastern thought, he heals a, mind, a man possessed of demons who is deaf and dumb. I was deaf and dumb spiritually for a long time. I'm still deaf and dumb. And he's still, open, he just opened me up just a little bit at a time. Okay? So until the Father heals, 
allows, remember that when somebody comes up against you instead of going, you shouldn't be doing that. Say, Father, bless them. And it's quiet. Mm -hmm. And may they have their eyes opened and their ears allow them. Please take away the death and the spirit as you're taking it away from you. Jesus knew their thoughts and said that every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan draws out Satan, he is divided against itself. How then can this kingdom stand? If I drive out demons by the Beelzebub, <coughs> by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges, but I will drive the, the demons out by the Spirit of God. And the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he ties up the strong man and then he can rob his house? So this goes on and on. He talks about the good fruit, the good tree, and all this. And then he comes down and it says... So we go down to 48, and it's about Jesus' mother and brothers. I'll start in 46. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mothers and my brothers. For whatever the will of my father is in heaven is, is my brother and sister and mother. Okay, that's the Ramez. So do y'all did y'all hear that in today's Torah portion? Okay, so let's go back to Deuteronomy. And this is how Yeshua wielded his nice little sword and put the Pharisees down. We're going to go to 33 verse 9. Well, let's start up in verse 8. This is about Levi. Right? Who are Levites? That's the priests, right? The priest. And what's the job of the Levites? They're to teach the people, right? Mm -hmm. And now these Pharisees, are these leaders of the day, they're very protective of their uh, priests and so forth, aren't they? So he says about Levi, he said, Your Thuman and your Urim belong to the well, man you favored. You tested him at Massa. You contended him with at the waters of Meribath. He said of his father and mother, I have no regard for them. He did not recognize his brothers or acknowledge his own children. Did Yeshua just state that? Who are my brothers? Who are my... That's what he just said, didn't he? Now remember, these people, they're, we've got a learning deficit here. These people knew the Torah. Front words backwards. It was memorized. So when he said that, this is what they knew. He said, ready? Listen to this. He says, he did not recognize his brother, but he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. He teaches your precepts to Jacob and your law to Israel. He's telling these people, I am the one that's teaching the precepts and the law to Israel. I am him. Now, hang on. It gets better. <laughs> he offers incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. Bless all his skills, O Lord, and be pleased with the work of his hands. Now, here is where he stepped on these people who were condemning him. Listen to what he says to them. Because remember, they had this word memorized. He tells them, Smite the loins of those who rise up against him. Strike his foes till they rise no more. 